Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a case from Sharkoon, part of the RGB Lit series. This is the RGB Lit 100. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Sharkoon RGB Lit 100, part of the RGB Lit series. At the moment there's a 100 and a 200 model, very similar prices, just slight differences on the front panel, so there's options available, should you not like this very pretty uh, geometric design which is on the front. This case is, at the moment in the UK, around about the £50 mark, so it actually puts it in a very, very attractive position for most new system builders. It's not that kind of stratospheric, expensive £100 mark, which some of us kind of fear a little bit, and it's not the kind of cheap and tacky £30 end of the market. So at the moment, this actually is in a very, very good spot. Now, it features all the latest things that you would expect to see from a modern computer case. That is modular bays, tempered glass side panel and front panel, addressable RGB features, plenty of USB options, lots of room for water cooling, and all those nice features like filtration. So let's go around the case, have a look at it. I've put the power supply in there already so you can see some of the RGB lighting. We'll leave that towards the end as the uh, special treat. And actually it does look really, really nice. So first of all, what do we get actually in the box? Well, clearly you get a case, pretty obvious. You get this pretty decent uh, owner's manual which goes through in quite a good depth of how to use all the individual parts and what radiators fit where, etc. But not to worry because we're going to go through that in this video. You also get a spare PCI Express banking plate. You get some rubberized grommets, cable ties, motherboard standoffs, all that kind of thing. There's also a kind of thumb screw designed adapter for putting in the motherboard standoffs, which I quite like the look of. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later, possibly. And also you get your kind of regulatory notice and all that kind of stuff, which uh, most of us are really not interested in. So that brings us to the case itself. Now, as you can see from the case, you've got this tempered glass on the front. Also got it on the side there, so uh, lots of nice shiny glass if that is your thing. The geometric pattern on the front may not be everyone's cup of tea. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm slightly on the fence about it myself. When it's actually illuminated, it does look very nice. But my consideration would be to put additional fans in the front, maybe RGB fans, might actually detract slightly from that design. But we'll maybe take a look at that a little bit later. I am planning to do a full build in this, which I'll be basically transplanting what is in the PC behind me all into this case. So if you want to see how that goes, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and also the chime icon so that you'll be notified of future video releases. Okay, so let's start with this side. This is the, the business side as far as I'm concerned, where you can see everything which is going on. So you've got this uh, almost full length side panel, which also you've got this basement section at the bottom. There is a RGB strip or addressable RGB strip which runs along this bottom section along with the glass so that looks really nice when it's lit up. Uh, hopefully you'll be seeing some B-roll of that as we go through the video. The side panel is actually easily removed. There isn't captive screws on this one but there are larger thumb screws so nice and easy to get off. And there's only two screws which I kind of like so it leaves this side panel nice and clear. And also if you could put it into some sort of recess there's nothing to actually catch on. And actually, even if you've taken the screws off, the side panel actually does remain on quite easily. It's got a kind of latching position, so there are latching areas in the four corners, which actually keep it all in place. And there's these kind of plastic trims as well, which stop it vibrating. So that's really nice. Also, you've got this kind of black trim around the outside edge. So when you are touching it or holding it to put the side panels on, you don't have to worry about getting fingerprints on it and trying to work out how you're gonna clean the fingerprints off from the inside when it's installed. So let's take a look at the inside area. So this is designed for ATX motherboards. You possibly could get a full size EATX board in there. Um, it is relatively flat on this back section, but if you did do that, you may need to not put any drives in this section here. This section is designed for mounting two SSDs or mechanical two and a half inch drives. You can put those in there, but again, if you're using a larger motherboard, then just be careful of what you put in there massive cutout section on the back there so if you're planning on some sort of exotic cooling water cooling or just a cooler which has a custom back plate it's going to be nice and easy to get access to my only slight concern actually is with some of the slightly smaller atx boards which tend to be a bit narrower that this cutout actually may be a little bit too large it does go pretty much right up to where the third motherboard standoff is so if you're using a motherboard that uses all nine of those standoffs then you're going to be absolutely fine but slightly smaller drives where you've got that kind of half width board you may have this showing which 
isn't the end of the world, but could be a distraction for some. At the top section, you've got some really nice punch outs for your supplementary ATX power, also for plugging cables for radiators, that sort of thing. There's also cutouts down the side here for putting your ATX power and also fan headers, all that kind of stuff. No rubber grommets on this. Again, it's that kind of 50 pound price point where you don't really always expect to see rubberized grommets. And actually you do see that rubberized grommets are kind of tailing off at the moment. As you can possibly see already, there is an included 120 mil addressable RGB fan, which comes in part of the kit. There's also a non-addressable standard 120 mil fan at the front. So two fans included straight out of the box. So you've got a balanced airflow. 120 in, 120 out. If you do want to add more fans, there's tons and tons of options for adding fans. So in the top section, you can add two 120s or two 140 mil fans. At the front, you can install an additional two 120 mil fans to join in with the, that one there. It will take a 360 mil radiator. So if you want to take out that fan, put in a full length radiator and some fans, you can do that. There is adjustment available at this bottom section. There is a drive bay at the bottom, which is uh, removable, it's modular. So you can take that out. So if you haven't got any three and a half inch drives, you can remove that to give yourself a little bit more room at the bottom. Moving slightly around to the bottom area. So we've got two sections here where you can put two, two and a half inch drives. There are sleds included. I've actually taken them off of there and put them onto the back of the board. So you can get up to six, two and a half inch drives in here. So two there, two there, and two there. Also in the drive sled underneath is really for three and a half inch drives, but you could put another two, two and a half in there if you wanted to. So giving you a total of up to eight drives if you get hold of two additional sleds. As standard, six drives are supported. One slight drawback of this case being slightly cheaper is your PCI Express expansion ports. Now these are the kind of uh, bend out ones, which just you break off. There is one included in the bag. So for dual slot graphics cards, you can take out the top one and the bottom one. If then you decide to sell the case on or whatever, you've got a blank in plate so you can make it look okay for those using an APU or not using a graphics card. Again, in this bottom section, there's loads of cutouts there. So for wiring, you're not gonna have any problems there, getting through your HD audio connector, your USB connectors, USB type three connector, fan connectors, all those kinds of headers are gonna be nice and easy to get to. And I think even actually with drives mounted there, you should find access is still pretty decent. You can also get through there SATA cables and SATA power cables to power your two SSD sleds that are in the bottom section. Moving around to the back of the case, you've got your pretty much standard layout. So you've got this section here, which is where your IO panel would normally sit. Space here for the 120 mil fan. Unfortunately, 120 mil fan is the only size you can get in there. There is a little bit of adjustment up and down, about an inch, inch and a half of adjustment should you need it. But again, totally serviceable. Moving down, you've got the retaining area for your PCI Express cards, graphics cards, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, there's not a lot you can say about that really. They are actually held on as well with screws. So you've got screws and also there's retention bracket, which you can tighten up. Then at the bottom, you've got the section for your power supply, which handles a normal ATX power supply. You could put an SFX one in there if you wanted to with an adapter, no reason why you shouldn't do, uh, but standard ATX is absolutely fine. Moving around to the back panel. Again, this is held on with exactly the same kind of thumb screws as the front panel is. And they're nice and easy oversized thumb screws to make the job very simple. Again, the panel doesn't want to fall off. You have to actually slide it back off of its lugs to gain access to the rear. And the panel itself, a little bit of rattle to it, but still a decent size. So let's take a look at the back of the case. So again, plenty of room. This cutout here is absolutely huge. And there's actually been some punch outs around the outside edge. So if you want to run cables around the outside edge, you can cable tie to there quite easily. I have actually taken the liberty of opening this up and putting some cable ties in just so you can get a better look to see what is actually going on here. So we've got our main bunch of cables here for the front IO, and then that runs down into this addressable RGB controller. Now the addressable RGB controller can support up to four devices. Currently, as it comes out of the box, it, it actually connects to three already. So we've got the RGB strip in the front panel. We've also got the RGB strip in the side panel. And also we've got the addressable RGB fan in the rear. So that's three taken up already, but there is an additional header there. So if you wanted to add an additional addressable RGB device, you can do. And obviously you can put splitters on there as well if you wanted to, to add more addressable RGB devices. The controller itself is controlled in two ways, either by the reset switch. So this cable here runs through up to the top to the reset switch. So you can use that and press the switch to cycle through the different RGB modes. Or alternatively, there is an additional cable here, which has the three pin addressable RGB and four pin addressable RGB headers on. So you can plug it into your motherboard and take control from the software. 
The controller itself is powered up by a SATA connection, so no uh, no Molex on here. Apart from, oddly, the fans, the Sharkoon fans, have got both three pin PWM style DC connections and also four pin Molex. So I think we'll be cutting those off. Moving down to the very bottom section, you can see here I've, I've stuffed in a ton of wires. Now this power supply is the CIT ATV 500 and it's completely captive cabling. So I've stuffed everything I can into there and there's still plenty of room. There's a lot of room here we could have used for cabling. And obviously because we haven't put a motherboard in, most of the cables would have gone up and around, etc. But even so, pretty much decent room in there for cable management. Again, we will be doing a full build in this. So don't forget to check that video out to see what the cable management is like when we actually go for it. I think it's going to be absolutely fine. You've got plenty of uh, length on the cables for the USB and also the HD audio and also for the front IO, all that kind of stuff. So I don't think we've got anything to worry about there. Again, if you want to, you can remove this entire caddy or cage at the bottom to give yourself a little bit more room. Again, if you're doing a water cooling, maybe that's something you could consider. But no, uh, no problems there, no qualms. I can't see any issues that could be forthcoming from that. Again, we've got these really nice big cutouts here for running through things like the ATX power and also fan headers, RGB headers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, all pretty decent. As you can see as well, I've got the two sleds here mounted. So these are literally just held on with thumb screws. So you can take it off, slot it up a little bit and these come off. So you don't have to use them if you don't want to. So if you want to clear up a little bit more room for cable management, you can do. Or again, these will fit on the basement in the front of the case. So if you've got maybe a pair of really nice drives that you want to have on show, then you can have those in the front section. So moving down to the bottom of the case, and you've got four rubberized feet, which is raised off the deck about an inch as well. So reasonable airflow to get to your power supply. Part of the cost cutting on this, unfortunately, is the kind of removable mesh filters, which I'm not a great fan of, but again, does what it's meant to do. It's not the, uh, the most difficult thing to take one out and vacuum it or whatever you need to do. We've got access to the four thumb screws on the bottom here. So this is for removing or adjusting the drive sled so you can push it forward or back. You may want to have it on the furthest back if you're putting a 360 mil radiator in there, uh, again, or just take it out entirely. The choice is entirely yours. Now, some people who are slightly eagle-eyed may have noticed already that there's this big open section here, which is going to let pure unfiltered air into the chassis. Now, it isn't a problem at all, and as you'll see in a minute when we remove the front panel, it's actually part of the design to give you more airflow. So on that note, let's move around to the front section. So as you can see, geometric design on the glass again. There is protective film on there, which I've left on currently until I get the build finished. And you've got the Sharkoon logo, all that kind of stuff. On the side here, we've got some ventilation areas, both sides. So airflow, I don't think is going to be a problem. Some people may be slightly concerned that this is a closed off front panel. But actually with the slits in the ventilation on the side and that large section at the bottom, which is completely wide open, airflow, I don't think is going to be an issue at all. But again, we'll find that out when we actually do the build on it. If you take the front panel off, which just snaps off. There is a captive cable which goes through to the addressable RGB, which again, if you wanted to, for simplicity, you could disconnect to remove it in its entirety. But as you can see, the glass itself is pretty much crystal clear. There's a very, very slight tint to it, but I think that might actually be from the protective section. If I peel that off a little bit, actually, I can confirm that now. And yep, yeah, it is completely clear glass, so no tint to that whatsoever once the film's removed. Again, we've got this geometric design, which I'm not even sure if it might come off. I might have a look at that at a later date to see if I can make it a little bit plainer for a particular project I've got in mind. But anyway, let's move on. So let's say plenty of ventilation down the sides there. This bottom section is open to draw air in. And because it's unfiltered at the bottom section on these side bits, you've got this large 360 mil magnetic filter, which you can choose to use or not. So if you want a higher airflow setup, you can remove that in its entirety. And in here now you can see where you've got the room for fans. So you could actually get two 140 mils in there or three 120s. You've got a little bit of room on the side for extra additional mountains. Unfortunately, I don't think you're gonna get three 140 mil fans in there. I think that'd be a stretch too far. Although if you're a little bit creative, you possibly could get it in there, but you may be blocking off some of this section at the top. Again, as I said, got this included fan. So this is a Sharkoon 120 mil fan with the, uh, the, the new designed blades. So really nice that they've included it straight out of the box. So next we'll take a look at the top section. So the top section, we've got our main IO, which actually I prefer to see it on the top rather than the sides. I don't know why people put IO on the sides, it's just really annoying. And also if you're plugging in something like a um, USB hard drive or something like that, you can at least you can rest it on the top, leave it connected. Those drives tend to have really short cables, so it's nice to have it just there. Or a power bank, if you're charging a power bank, for instance, 
short cables, quite easy to leave it on the top there. Anyway, I'm digressing again. So on the top, we've got a USB 2.0, USB 3.0, USB 3.0, got the headphones and microphone. There's two LEDs, which power LED and hard drive LED. Next to that, you've got the reset button, which also doubles up as a RGB control button. Again, if you connect it to the RGB controller, if you don't, then obviously don't worry about that at all. And then you've got a nice clicky square power button. You also got this removable mesh on top as well for the either two 120s or two 140 mil fans or your radiators or combinations thereof. So nice that it's filtered. Although most people will have this section as a exhaust. So why you'd want to filter exhaust air, I'm not entirely sure, but it does seem to be kind of an industry standard these days. But again, if you want to have the fans the other way around, drawing air in, then at least it's going to be filtered a little bit. Okay, so next up, We've pretty much covered everything on here, so let's fire up the RGB and see what it actually looks like. I've turned off some of the lighting, so the lighting looks a little bit different. I do apologise, but you really need to see this. And there you go, there is the RGB. So as you can see, the certain elements of this where it's printed white actually show up the geometric pattern in RGB. And you've got the fan in the back. Now obviously this isn't spinning, so it's not connected to a motherboard, but the RGB is controlled by the addressable RGB controller in the back, which is currently set to use our reset button. So if I press the reset button, you can see you can go through and cycle some of the colors. And I may cut away from this and show you some B-roll if it looks better for the lighting, but you'll get the idea. So going through, you've got various different options there. And again, it does show you on the front panel. So there's a addressable RGB strip in the front here. You've also got it in the fan itself and also down this section here. I'm pretty glad I left the side panel off now. So other options, you've got the multiple colors, then also you've got your statics. So you've got your red, your green, your blue, the white, the yellow, the cyan, is that? And then you've got your pink or magenta, your static rainbow, your moving rainbow. I'm not sure what they call that. <laughs> and then this crazy kind of candy floss type design. But there's a few options there and you can get it then so it can cycle through, so it fades in through the colors. So plenty of options for all those uh, RGB lovers out there. If you're into your RGB, then I think this is probably going to appeal to you, especially for the price point. So you've got plenty of flexibility, up to a 360mm radiator on the front, up to a 280 on the top, and a 120mm on the back if you wanted to. Lots of flexibility, lots of filtration, and all costing around about £50 here in the UK. I don't think there's much more you could ask for, to be honest with you, although I would really like to see a clear glass panel on the front or an option to get rid of this printing. I'm seriously considering using the uh, Sharkoon Blade fans, which the new ones which come out, which you can check out in the video up here. And they have got the square RGB bits on the front. I think they'll look amazing in there, but I'm not sure if the geometric pattern will actually detract from that. But again, we'll find out when we do the video. So there we go, there is the Sharkoon RGB Lite 100. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the build video. Thanks for watching.